Today we're going to be testing the autofocus performance between the GH5 and the new A7 III from Sony. Let's get undone. What is happening everybody? I'm Gerald Lundun and today we're gonna to be conducting a few tests to check the autofocus performance between my current GH5 and my new Sony A7 III. To keep things as fair as possible, the conditions for the test are going to be as follows. We're gonna be using native glass on both lenses. Now the Sony lens is faster than my Panasonic lens, so we're gonna stop them both down to f2.8. Both cameras are gonna be recording in 4K at 24p. I'll be using my optimized GH5 autofocus settings from that video that I made on it. I'll put a link in the description for that. And on the Sony camera, I'm gonna be using Sony's recommended balanced autofocus continuous settings. I'm gonna be using that single square box area autofocus mode. On the Sony, I think it's a medium size, but relative to the frame, it'd probably be like this big, I guess, something like that. And lastly, I'm gonna to attempt to expose them as evenly as possible. Okay, I think that's everything pertinent. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put on my native lens. Right now I'm actually using a Sigma lens on my GH5. So I'm gonna put on a native lens uh, because the one I have on the Sony right now is an 85, so I'm gonna put this to as close focal length as I can get, stop them both down to 2.8, and I'm probably gonna have to back up a little bit. And then I'll talk to you about a couple other things that we'll be testing at the same time. Stand by. <laughs> Banana, there. So I think I'm all set up. I have just come to discover though that doing an autofocus test like this it's pretty difficult with just one person, especially because I don't have flip out screens for the Sony and I'm trying to monitor things on the phone at a remote distance and make sure everything's working. Uh, there's a bit of challenges here. So I apologize for any kind of weirdness in the test where maybe it's not completely optimal. But anyway, there's a couple other things that we're gonna be testing here. They're secondary to the autofocus test, but they're worth noting. One is going to be sort of minor image quality checkups because I'll be recording with both cameras and I'll be switching back and forth. So you can kind of take an idea at the image quality because they're both doing like a 6K down to 4K kind of oversampling. And uh, I also wanted to check how accurately I can match the Sony's footage to the GH5. And this will be useful for anybody that's thinking about maybe picking up this camera, because these cameras are the same price. So if you were thinking about picking this one up as maybe your secondary, so you have, you know, maybe uh, some full frame options and maybe some better autofocus of different low light things on one side and then have the GH5 and sort of complement each other that way. Uh, this will hopefully, I don't know which lens I'm supposed to look at here. This will hopefully, uh, uh, help with that idea because I want to try to match the Sony to look like the GH5 because I've really gotten the GH5 to a place where I like the way that it looks. And then the last thing, obviously, as part of the image quality idea will be, you know, a little bit of low light, that kind of thing. I've made the image a little bit underexposed here because I think that should labor the autofocus a little bit more so. And also uh, when I when I do the, the post stuff on it, we'll see, you know, how much noise was introduced and that kind of thing because obviously the Sony should be a lot better in low light so we can see maybe if it if it comes into effect in practical shooting situations i'm obviously not shooting this at 12,800 iso i think i'm i don't know 500 or something on the gh5 now i don't know how any of these tests are going to work out but you guys are already seeing the results of the two different cameras right now i'm gonna have to edit this before i get to see any of it okay so let's start the autofocus test so for the first test what i'm going to do is i'm going to do just a classic pop in pop out of the frame I've got a high contrast light bulb box here, and I'm just gonna try to use this so I know about where to put it. Hopefully, maybe I'll do it horizontally so we have a better shot. The focus points aren't exactly the same between the two cameras, so I'm gonna try my best here. So it's on my face, and then now we got a light bulb box. Okay, back to my face. The GH5 is a bit more user-friendly out of the box for this kind of purpose. One, because it's a flip-out screen, the Sony doesn't. Two, the Panasonic app on the on the phone is really, really easy to use, so you can monitor yourself that way. With the Sony, I'm just guessing, but I have it. I have the Sony pointed a little bit better at me, so it's like pointed right at me, so hopefully I can kind of like, you know, get it in the right thing there. With the GH5, I'm kind of using the monitor a little bit. With the GH5, I'm kind of using the monitor a little bit. Okay, so that's that one. Now for the next test, we're gonna do the one where you move an object ever closer along a linear path. This works when you're walking up to the camera, you're walking away from the camera, that kind of thing. Now, I think to best do this, I'm just going to wheel myself in and out. Try to keep myself in those boxes. And then now I'm just gonna bring myself closer and closer and see, 
try to stay outside of the close focus distance. I think both of these will focus just inside of a meter, so I should be fine where I am now. And then now I'm going to back up again. You guys are going to get a freaky close look at my face. And then let's go closer again. I'm wheeling in like a weirdo. One more time, a little bit faster. So now what I'm going to try and do is uh, do more of a handball thing, which I guess will sort of slightly test the image stabilization as well between the two cameras, but not really that much. I'm using uh, long focal length, so it should be pretty wobbly and not, not great. So hopefully I don't make you too nauseous. But uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to point it at different objects at different distances and see how quickly it responds. This is going to be a bit more accurate, and a bit more aimed because I'm going to be controlling it, boom, hitting the, hitting the objects that way. And I might increase the lighting a little bit. So let's do that now. Okay, so now I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to edit it up to this point so that I can apply the color matching, take a look at some of the image quality stuff, and put the autofocus test side by side so I can actually draw conclusions. And then I'll come back and let you know what I observed while editing and see if we can come up with a definitive conclusion on these tests. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. The first part of the video is edited and I think that I have some conclusions figured out. A couple quick notes I noticed about the autofocus, just some mistakes on my half and maybe some, some improper testing. I think that there was a couple points where the Sony went a little bit wonky and that might have been that I got a little bit, I got a little bit past the close focus distance on the 85mm where the, the Panasonic lens was still within its range. So. I think that might have caused it to, to not be able to focus at, at a couple points. And I think there was one point where I was actually just outside of the box. But within that, I think I was still able to, to, to get some decent conclusions drawn. Uh, here's what I noticed. Uh, they focus differently. And there's a small benefit to that on the GH5 and quite a few benefits, I think, to that on the Sony. Uh, the Sony is more responsive. And something you need to know is that the GH5 is at its like very responsive settings where the Sony is at like its balance setting. So even with the Sony only on balanced, it's more responsive than the GH5. And it resp its responsiveness is better. It's a better type of responsiveness for the most part. And by that, I mean when the GH5 focuses on something, once it does respond, then it, then it achieves focus and then it kind of doesn't stop. It, it still kind of jitters and, and, and it pulses a little bit. And I don't like that. I don't like seeing lights behind me, you know, pulse in and out. I, I, I don't like that look at all. Where the Sony, it responds quickly, but then once it, once it has focus, it's like, okay, I'm done. And then it stops monkeying around. It doesn't pulse at all. Now with that, there's a small advantage of the GH5, which is that if you're trying to make a more cinematic look, I noticed a couple times when I, when I kind of came in slowly, the GH5 kind of just kind of crawled in on the focus and it seemed a little bit more, you know, like cinematic zoom like, and, and I kind of liked that. But then once I stopped, than the pulsing, where the Sony, when I kind of crept in, it kind of did it more in stages. It was like, focused, I focused, I focused, I focused. And, and in that, it's kind of a little bit more jumpy in, in the focus steps, but once it gets focused, it's done and there's no pulsing. So in a fixed position like this, if I was like, let's go take a look at the back, and then I walked to the back, the Sony would be a bit better because it would focus on the back, and then that would be that. Where the GH5 would focus on the back and then kind of pulse a little bit. So I think I would rather have the Sony situation in most 
in most settings. As far as image quality goes, both of these uh, images look great. I do like the colors a little bit better on the GH5, and I was trying to match the Sony to it, which I thought I was actually able to do pretty well. But the Sony handles its blacks a little bit differently, and it has a different dynamic range. I, I think it has a better dynamic range than the GH5 did. But the GH5 has 10-bit, and the Sony only has 8-bit, so there's some advances there of what you can do with the colors. And I kind of personally, just as, this is just taste, but I kind of like the Panasonic's colors a little bit better. So matching the Sony to the Panasonic, obviously the Panasonic's gonna do its own colors better than the Sony will. And uh, both of these are way sharper than you need them to be. <laughs> like, you know, the 6K down kind of thing. So you're not gonna worry about that. You're gonna get nice crispy images out of both, but you will get better low light out of the Sony without question. That's just, that's easy and obvious. The low light in some of these Sony cameras is, is outstanding. One thing I will complain about with the Sony I noticed is that when it recorded the video files, it nested them strangely in folders. You had to go into the SD card and then into private and then like M4 root and then it was there with XML files. It's really strange. With the GH5, just put them in the sort of parent folder on the card. And the GH5 recorded the whole video all in one file, all on one MP4, no time limits, no breaking up, or the Sony broke them up into like four gig files or something like that, and there's like time restrictions. So it's definitely easier to record footage longer in body on the GH5. The, the video features are better on the GH5. You know, you can do 10-bit internal recording, all I, no time limits, etc. But the Sony's got its benefits as well. So, you know, both cameras are great, and, and it really just comes down to what's important to you. But if you're watching this video, you're probably watching it for autofocus, and if autofocus is important to you, you wanna know who the winner is, it's Sony. I gotta say the Sony a7 III has a better, more reliable autofocus. For the for the functions that I could see a person wanting to use autofocus for, I think the Sony does it better. And I think that even though people will always complain about the way autofocus works in different modes and stuff like that, I don't think anybody's ever made an autofocus that people are like, this is exactly what I want. And maybe some of the, the dual pixel stuff that Canon's done, people thought, okay, that's perfect. But I will say this, I can't see you having too reasonable of a complaint about the a7III's autofocus for most usages. In my opinion, it works exceptionally well. I think anybody looking to get the a7III for autofocus performance should be very, very happy. So the win goes to the Sony for autofocus in this video. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. And let me know in the comments what you what you took from the video, like what your analysis is from watching the footage, what, you know, who you give the win to or what you like better or don't like better. You know, leave those in the comments so that other people can watch it and sort of get a consensus view on it. All right. I'm done.